Here we have a semi-complicated looking algebraic equation. Square root of the quantity 10 minus x equals x plus 2. We want to solve this quadratic equation, a hidden quadratic, uh, for x. So to do that, let's try and put it at 0 equals something in the normal way and see if we can tease it out to be a normal quadratic equation. So to do that, we want to get rid of this, uh, this square root here. Let's take the square of both sides and see what we get. Now if we take the square of this side, well, we'll just get your 10 minus x back. The square of this side gives us the square of x plus 2. So we need to square this out and see what we get from that. 10 minus x equals x squared. So first times first, second times seconds is plus 4. And then we get the two cross terms. Plus 2x plus 2x is plus 4x. So two quantities of 2x. So great, we do have a quadratic. It was a hidden quadratic after all. Now we can put it all on the same side and write it in the normal way. So subtract 10, add x. So that gives us 0 equals x squared is the same. Our 4x is now plus 1, so plus 5x. And then 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Great. So it's written in the normal way, and we can just solve it in any way that we want from here. So at this point, you pause and you want to figure out what the simplest way to solve this quadratic equation is. Uh, it looks like we can probably factorize this right away. Of course, factorizing is the quickest and easiest way. If we can do that, we want to try that. So let's see what we get if we do that. Well, if we have two quantities, x, x, and then plus or minus here, well, let's see. We have a minus here, so we know we need to have one minus and one plus, because they need to multiply together to get a minus, and then they're going to add in some way, add and subtract in some way to get a five. So what are, the, uh, what are the factors of six? Six and one, of course, and three and two. So if we uh, add or subtract this in any way, we're not going to get a five, but we can see that five is one different from six. So not this one, but this one. Now we know that it doesn't matter for this which order it goes in, but we want the final outcome to be a positive five. So we make the positive the bigger number. So plus six minus one. Great. Now there's just one more step. Since we factorized it, we can solve it directly from reading off of this. What's the opposite of this number and the opposite of this number? In other words, what's going to make this quantity zero or this quantity zero, thus making this uh, whole uh, product zero. So the opposite of this is going to say x1 is negative 6. In other words, if I plug in negative 6 here, I'll get 0. And x2 is the opposite of this, which is positive 1. So we have our two answers here. x equals negative 6 and positive 1. Of course, we can go back and plug these in for x here both times and see if it works.